Greetings, greetings, all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support the brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. And that's dreams with three Z's at the end. Okay, today's episode, I got a little, I did a little deep dive into, you know, just with all the smashing and grabbing and this and that. And a lot of people have different outlooks on the reason why they steal. So I started to look and I started to understand some people have an understanding that these corporations are stealing from the little people and they don't care anything about the customer. So some people feel stealing from these big corporations, hey, they stealing from you, I'm stealing from you, they're stealing from them, he's stealing from him. Everybody is just stealing. So I looked at it and I really thought to myself, do they have a point or is it totally crazy? So you guys let me know in the comments down below when we go through these and see different opinions on it. And you guys let me know which one was your favorite. And have you ever stole before from your job or just grabbed a few things and forgot that it was in your pocket? Let me know. Let's jump right into it. Let's get it. If you have a job, steal. Steal. If you steal. work for somebody, take from them. Please do. Because they're taking from you. Yeah. So you take from them. You take from Everyone's stealing from somebody. Why not you? It's the best thing America does. Yeah. Is steal. Steal. I mean, we stole the land. Right. We stole the people. Yeah. We've been stealing since Culture. This baby We're was stealing everything. Everything. Take, yeah. take, 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 take. Not my fault. Not my I'm fault. I'm just an employee. Take, 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 <laughs> take, 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 take. Not my Working at this human resources position that you were able to take from them was? The audit showed 365000 What did you do with the money? I blew it. Jeff Bezos has stolen over $100,000 from me. And as a small business, that is insurmountable. Like I- A lot of big companies steal from the little from companies. So now I have to, I have to file for bankruptcy. I have to bankrupt my business, a business I started three years ago, over three years ago during COVID when the world was at its roughest I was so proud to be able to create something and now I have to shut it down. But what happened? Well, I created a board game. Um, it's called Disparity Trap. It's a social justice board game. It's basically like, you know, like the board games we grew up on. You know, your goal is to go around the board, accrue wealth uh, by hitting all these milestones. I'm like getting a job or going to college, um, starting a business. The whole goal is that you are doing that in someone else's shoes by playing an identity different from yours that you live in. So it's putting yourself in someone else's shoes. It's living in someone else's perspective. And each of those milestones are based off real life statistics, real life research. Um, so it's a very educated. It's a shame because a lot of big companies steal from little companies too. So a little get back and I'll get into that later about hacking and stuff like that. That's another video. Stay tuned. Educational board game is to teach you about um, the inequities in our society. And in a very ironic fate, <laughs> I am living through the statistics of my own board game. And I'm realizing that as I say it out loud right now. That's crazy. That is That's crazy. Um, so I created this board game um, with my own money, 100% of my own money. I saved up money um, during COVID. Um, I invested that money into stocks. I'm grateful for the stocks that I happened to invest into. And I earned enough money that I felt confident to take that money out and invest into myself immediately. I'm um, over $20,000 of that money I spent in creating this board game in terms of just like ideation of like putting it all together, play testing it, 
getting friends and family to all play it multiple times. All those people who've done this, thank you so much. You know who you are. And I launched a Kickstarter. And to launch that Kickstarter, I made a commercial. I spent $11,000 on that commercial. I wrote it. I directed it. I produced it. I had friends in it, but I paid everybody their union rates. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. And I made this commercial. And then I put the commercial on Kickstarter and I launched the Kickstarter and it was funded in five days. And then I started doing pre-orders. And then I sold over 10,000 copies of this board game. And years into all of this, Amazon just takes it. They just take it. How do they take it? One day I go online. I'm using... Just to clarify some people who don't understand, I put my board game with Amazon Fulfillment Centers. There's a whole program they have for small businesses where you could take your hard copy products that you created um, and put them in their facilities around the country so that when people purchase it on your personal website, you can basically automate it so it sends it to their fulfillment center and their fulfillment center ships it to those customers and so it gets there really quickly. That sounded amazing to me. It was very affordable for a small business, so I did it. But then, I sold, and I was selling. Amazon was like, we're gonna charge you more. So I started charging more and more money. They were charging me thousands of dollars a month to keep my inventory there. It went from hundreds to thousands of dollars to keep my inventory there. So I was like, I gotta get my inventory out. So I started moving it out. But what they didn't tell me so clearly, they put it really in some small, small places that it's going to cost me three times more to get it out than it cost me to get it in per unit. Actually, 10 times more. It cost me a couple hundred dollars to get my units there. But it's costing me, it cost me $10,000 to get a portion of it out. And by the time I could stop it, I had to pay still that $9,000, so I paid it. I went to debt on credit cards to pay that. I paid it. it, wasn't good enough for Amazon. So they now, when I started moving it, I had to pay it, and then I was like, I have this other inventory, I don't wanna work with Amazon anymore, I'm gonna liquidate it. So that basically means I take that inventory and I give it to third party sellers at a discount rate, and they could sell it their own way, and I make a little bit of money on that product. I lose out because I don't make the full price value of it, but I don't have to lose out by like having it sit on shelves, so to speak. I did that. So now Amazon owes me about sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000 because I'm using the whole system, like Amazon's connecting us, me and the other third parties, because they have my products. And they get a portion of that, and my portion totals 16 something thousand dollars They already got their portion. And mine, after all of that, Amazon got their portion. After all of that, mine's sixteen, seven thousand dollars and Amazon still doesn't want to give me that. They hold it off. They immediately flag somehow. Not immediately, but right when the money was starting to be owed, like months later when the money's starting to be owed, because you have to wait a couple months for them for this whole process. Once the money was starting to be owed, they put a hold on my account. They deactivated my account. Then they say my account has been doing um, is suspected of fraudulent criminal illegal activity that's harmful to the customers don't know what that means I made this product myself I manufactured this myself with a manufacturer in China obviously I didn't make this myself in China I paid for it to come to the United States I did all the legal regulation I made it all get here I did the trademarking all of it so who's fraud who not one customer chargeback or complaint on my Amazon account but they say they flag it I go through the whole process the whole process it took four more months and they don't get back to any of my emails for those four months. They're just like submit information, submit information. I submit the information. I submit my paperwork, my insurance, all this stuff. They wait, they come back. They're like, um, they just have a standard message saying we're going to maintain that you have been act doing fraudulent activity. Doesn't tell me what exactly that activity is this whole time. Not one specific example of what I've done. Just a standard template statement. I keep following. I keep sending emails. I send Dozens and dozens and dozens of emails, no replies from anyone that it used to reply back to me back when I was uh, in their good graces, I guess. But now, nothing. Nothing from them. They just go dead silent. 
Then I finally get a message saying that they're going to go through a verification process. I go through the verification process. I don't see anyone on the screen. I just hear this voice of this Eastern European person talking to me. Don't even know if they're from the United States. Don't even know where they're from. They're just talking to me. I do all the things. I show my passport. I show all the things. They say, okay, we'll let you know um, in a few days what the result is. I get back the same tip of the email. After review, we have made a final decision that you've been acting in fraudulent uh, activity and you are not going to get your inventory over 2,600 units and you're not getting your 17 16 17 thousand dollars basically flat out they're keeping all of it and now that's over hundred thousand dollars worth of inventory thanks jeff bezos so i'm don't know what i'm doing here i just i guess i'm asking for help i have nothing left so i i need help um the best thing I want to do is try and pay back the people I owe money to. Even though I'm filing for bankruptcy, I still want to pay them back. So the best way to do that is to sell the remaining inventory I have. Um, like I said, I I have a I pulled some from Amazon. It cost me a lot of money to do it, but I have it, and I want to sell that as soon as possible. Um, if you look at uh, www.disparityshop.com, you'll find the way you could buy it. You will find it on Amazon. It will be cheaper. It's going to be like half the price because Amazon just does that. They steal it and then now they're selling it and they're making all the money off of it now. If you want to help, please purchase it from my website um, and share this. Thanks. Over the last week, I've seen a number of cases all over the planet where people who are high profile have ended up shoplifting items they don't need and have ended up in substantial trouble. We're talking about people who are prominent in society, who hold high office, who have money behind them, and yet they steal. And to the untrained eye, and certainly to my perspective when I started my job a decade ago, this makes absolutely no sense. Shoplifting is not a victimless crime. The reality is it hurts the business that's being shoplifted from, and it hurts us as consumers because businesses have to account for a certain amount of loss by theft and therefore drag prices up. And so if you are somebody who has the money to buy the item and can get the item without any difficulty, why would you risk it all by shoplifting? I can tell you that roughly two or three times a year, I end up with a case like this. Someone who for no reason and who can't even explain to me why they stole, ended up in trouble for stealing. And I too was a bit perplexed until I spoke to a colleague of mine who's a psychologist who has an expertise in this particular area. Now kleptomania, which is a pathological need to take an item that's not yours, is a recognized form of mental impairment. That's, that's within the auspices of the legislation and that's within the auspices of the medical community. And there are people who just can't help themselves. They feel a compulsion to grab something, even though they don't know why. And when I spoke to him, I said, why do people do this? You know, because I was acting for someone really high profile, you know, far more successful than me. I said, why would they risk it all to steal what is essentially a $40 sweater? It just doesn't make sense. They don't need the money. And he explained that you can't just say that there's one size fits all, so to speak, when it comes to this type of behavior. Some people steal because they need to, others steal for a thrill. And others subconsciously actually are dealing with stress they can't process. They're taking the items to feel good temporarily, and deep down they hope they get caught. All of this is to say that of course we don't condone shoplifting, of course we don't condone stealing, it's not right. But when I look at some of the comments that people are saying online, when I'm looking at some of the approach that people are taking, it's very sad that while I can accept that we need to deter these people, there's a necessary degree to which we should shame them and say, don't behave this way that people are completely blind to the fact that maybe, not saying definitely, but maybe, there's a pretty valid underlying psychological reason for someone to throw everything away to get an item they don't need and risk everything that they have for a desire to simply, you know, cope with something. And I think if we can deal with that with compassion, we'd be doing a good thing. It's called the approval game. What I would do is hire a crew. They'll go inside the candy store or go inside of a jewelry store and make a purchase. When they card decline, they'll contact me on the other line. Why, why are they contacting you? So they go in there and they make a purchase for about $65,000. And typically when your card declines, the sales rep tell you to contact your bank. But instead of contacting your bank, you're contacting me. The same thing your bank could say, thank you for calling Visa Merchant Services. Sarah, can I get your account number, please? Expiration date, name as it appears exactly in a cart and amount of purchase. I ask them for their Visa Merchant number. The sales rep give me their Visa Merchant number. After she gave me their Visa Merchant number, I ask her, can she ask the customer for the last four for social? Same thing your bank could say when you call on your credit card decline. Oh, shit. 
She verify all that with me. I make sure that everything is accurate on the customer's account. Get back on the phone with the sales rep. I have an authorization code for you. Do you have a pen and paper handy? If she need assistance with the transaction through her terminal, I assist her with that. Where's the money coming from? Your guess is as good as mine. It's coming from the bank. That's why they FDIC insure. Manual transaction is what it initially is called, or for sale. Companies and banks are not supposed to do offline, for sale. However, when the other party is on the phone and they think it's a Visa merchant service, they continue on with the transaction. This week, a Tarrant County judge sentenced Stacy Blackman to 35 years in prison. Prosecutors say she also used stolen funds on other lavish expenses. Fox 4's David Centendry spoke with prosecutors. David. Well, the Tarrant County District Attorney's Office says Stacy Blackman spent about a million of dollars of stolen money on TikTok coins and then gave those TikTok coins to influencers in hopes of growing a following of her own. She spent her money on TikTok. 1.2 million dollars. That's how much money Stacy Blackman pled guilty to stealing from a former employer while giving most of that money to influencers on the social media app TikTok. A trusted individual. She was deceptive upon deceptive upon deceptive. Blackman worked as an office manager for a high-end home building company in Southlake. In 2019, she began using a bank account of a senior partner who unexpectedly passed away. According to so the money was stuck in probate. Stacy Blackman actually befriended the heir of this senior partner and was helping her figure out where all he had accounts and all of this. And so she was literally walking through this with the person she was victimizing. Blackman used a company credit card to send nearly $900,000 through PayPal to TikTok. And she was using that bank account that had his life savings in it to pay that credit card. So why TikTok? Well, prosecutors say Blackman was using the money to tip social media influencers on live streams in hopes of building her own following. Blackman also purchased a suite for Dallas Mavericks games, lavish trips, and more. She didn't buy any assets. She didn't put the money anywhere and had nothing to offer to pay back that was comparable to the amount that she stole. She went ahead and stole another $400,000 from the business as well. Blackman's employer ultimately caught on to the theft, which led the company down a rabbit hole, realizing theft had been going on for several years. Extremely intelligent. She only ever graduated from high school, but that is no measure of how intelligent you are or how good you are at figuring out how to hide money. And she is very good at that. Well, what I could say, I see a lot of the big companies, big corporations, they're mad at, you know, people stealing and just stealing from anybody. I can understand somebody being mad, but some people do have a point. You know, these big companies and big corporations, they don't really care too much about the customers and they've been stealing from people for years. I mean, but not to say you could go out there and just steal from people, but things do happen. I guess some people feel in certain, in certain situations, under certain predicaments, you know, they feel like, you know, they're not being compensated so the company doesn't care about them so they don't care about the company and vice versa it's just it's just crazy out there you guys let me know what you think about the whole thing and have you ever been in any situations like this let me know down below and you guys stay tuned i have the hackers video coming up i know you guys been waiting i got you right after this check it out Till next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe.